opportunity you are given in life yeah you need to use it to grow you advise upcoming artists to be signed or to be it's it's up to you it was also including band and zulu sort of a uh, way of Yo, 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 ladies and gentlemen, welcome to No Chill Vodcast. Can I please have a horn? <laughs> welcome, Buffet, to this is our fourth episode of No Chill Vodcast. As you know already, Buffet, to our ultimate goal is to educate you, to entertain you, and encourage you, Buffet. Three E's. Three E's, don't forget that. So, Buffet, today we have a legend in the building. I'm so, 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 so happy. To just sit down with this guy because I've been wanting to sit with with him down, but for the longest time, eh, it, it was not possible. But look at God. Uh, today we're filled with DJ Katu, aka Abu Di Nice Time. Be, 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 be. <laughs> Abu Di Nice Time. <laughs> uh, DJ Katu is a DJ. He's a producer. He's a business uh, person. He's also a comedian. And we're gonna talk about all these things. Uh, um, I mean, Bafe, you're going to learn a lot here. He's not just a comedian or a DJ, but he has a mindset that is running all these things. Uh, Katuchero Edichan, hey, that's your name. That's uh, my name. How are you, my brother? I'm happy. 100%. Please, can you just put it? I want people oh. to hear. Ah, hundred percent. That love. <laughs> <laughs> How are you, man? Welcome to No Chill Podcast. Thanks brother. for having me. Thanks for having me. I'm all right. I'm all right. Uh, I'm, I'm, rocking. I'm Th- rocking. Thank you so much. I mean, I'm people rocking. like you, man, they actually are hard to get. But if... Uh, yeah. Sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> you're a yeah. DJ and you're doing a lot of things. And that's what uh, actually made us to decide that this is the person that we want to talk to because... You've been doing a lot of things in the space of like entertainment. You're a DJ, you're a comedian, you're, you also own a, a recording label of your own. And that's just a lot of things that you're doing. So now I just want uh, maybe you can just tell us a little bit of um, the background, the upbringing of uh, DJ Kartu. Obviously, your name is Kartu, but all these names, I would nice time DJ Kartu, they came as you were growing. So, how did this uh, passion of DJing, obviously that's what you started with, comedy chose you according to what I actually found out. So, how did this DJing start? Um, how was the so, experience so, also? So, I like how you posed the question, right? Yeah. I thought you were going to say, tell us more about Kat. I was going to be, I am Kat. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. I um, actually had one of your interviews. You said that you don't like that. So yeah, I no, no, I don't. Need, the minute you say to me, "Tell us more about yourself," yeah, I, say, I shut down. Yeah, I, I think, I think, honestly speaking, um, DJing is something that um, growing up, I've always had a passion for it. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of music that's being played in the house. Yes, you know, my yes. dad used to dance. Oh, is my it? Dad used to be a dancer. Nice. Used to dance. Yeah. Um, so. Growing up, my dad would play reggae music, would be play um, jazz music, he'd play all these types of music. So I always yeah. thought to myself, what is it that I can do to fuse the music together? Yes. But because I was young, I never got to understand. Yeah. Until a couple of my friends, um, I was around, I think, 14. I was 14 when I started DJing. Yeah. Um, my friends were like, hey, listen, uh, my aunt, one of my aunts is having a, a, a wedding they want a DJ, want music and what I was like, yeah. ah, guys, me, I've got a computer. <laughs> Let's hook up yeah. amps and speakers. We yes. went, we played wedding songs and what the people yeah. liked it. And yeah. they booked us to another 21st birthday party from there on. Yeah. Just And then I was like, listen, I want to take this thing very, very professionally. I want to go study uh, radio. Yes. yes. So I can be able to get into the space of being in radio. Yeah. I know if I work at YFM. Yeah. Why if I work at Metro FM, yes. I'm going to pop. Yes. When I when I pop, I'm gonna make money from DJ. Yeah. You know, initially my mom was against it. 
Yeah. My mom did it. My mom was like, no. Yeah. My dad, um, my dad was supportive. Yes. From the jump was very yeah. supportive. I went, registered um, at Media House, Boston Media House. Yeah. Um, in Sentin. Um, then I left home. Now, you know, to go live in the... We live in the streets now. Yeah. You live in a, in, a, in a commune, all of those stuff. Yeah. So when I was studying, um, I was always getting gigs, but I was like, no, let me throw parties of my own. Yes. I yes. started to throw parties. Made so much money. Yeah. So there's a thing. Uh, I don't know if other cultures, they do it. Maranga when yeah. when you get your first pay, yes, you give it to your parents. Oh, yes. Right? Yeah, I know that. Yeah. yeah, you give it, you give the whole, you don't take a bit, you give the whole pay to your yeah. parents. Yeah, yeah, you give the whole pay to your parents and then your parents, um, then they give it back to you or they do whatever they want to do. With yes. You. The first time I gave my mom money from my actual, actual gig, I think yeah. it was around three point something. Yes, that was, was a like, lot, obviously. Yeah, in fact, it was a lot. My yeah. mom's like, yeah, I was like, you see, <laughs> this DJ thing works. <laughs> yeah. So, 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 so I did that and I played everywhere. Yeah. You know, I remember I used to sneak into clubs. Yeah. I was young, man. My dad used to take So it's me been a passion, like it's been a passion. Yeah. No, it, being a being a DJ has been a passion. Yeah. You know, cool. I used to sneak into well, there was a club in in Midran called Wuzu. Yes. Sneaking I was young. Yeah. You know, you're sneaking in there, you're very young, you're hoping they don't see you, the bouncers, yeah. what yeah. you bribe bouncers, mm-hmm. bounce, so just so you can just go out there, learn about music. Yeah. Be in the space, yeah. So that's so that's how the passion for DJing, you know. Started. Cool. I mean, I, and and also I've learned that you also come from a royal family. So saying that, and also the way you came up, I mean, sometimes you know you can. I mean, I understand royal family. Sometimes they have some restrictions in terms of what they would like to see because you're not representing yourself alone. You're also representing the whole entire family. How how hard was it for you to just come out? as a dj and i mean i understand you you explain how you came out and everything but the difficult part of having to look at what other people will say and you also doing something which is not even aligned to what this society would expect so so luckily yeah. um i didn't grow up very Oh. I, I don't want to say luckily, but I'm, t- I'm in that in the, to answer your yes, question. Yes, yes, it makes sense. Um, I grew up in Tembisa. Oh, okay. Right? So yeah. I was never exposed to that part of the family. Oh, okay. That family is there, but I was never exposed to that part okay, of the family. Yeah. I was exposed to this, this part side. Of the family, yeah, to yes, understand. Yes, so, yes. you know, it was just. <laughs> See, let's just party, yes, let's hustle, let's yes, do all of yes. these things. The environment. So, the yeah. environment, yeah. you know. Um, to this point, I've just lived my life according to my own rules. Yeah. Because that's one thing that my mom, um, uh, my late grandfather, my yes. mom, my late grandfather, and, and, and my pops always pushed to me to say, live according to how you, be something that you're going to be proud of. Yes. In the next 10, 20, 30 years. Exactly. So I've lived according to my own rules. Yeah. Really. So I don't necessarily let family or society or whatever yeah. um, uh, deter me from what I want to do or what I want to achieve. So you mentioned your grandfather and, and rest in peace, uh, rest in peace to, to him. Yeah. Uh, you, you mentioned here that you actually started your skits trying to mimic him the way he sounded the accent and everything so just tell me a little bit obviously now we're gonna venture into the skits side of it uh the first video i saw from you and which i should also i mean i feel like it's important for people to know Uh, by the time i watched these videos i was still doing no show memes i was uh actually hiding behind the memes but I saw his video and I saw that it's DJ Katu. The Katu, yeah. the name yeah. was Venda. I was like, okay, if this guy is trending and he's doing <laughs> these things, I mean, I can also do it. Yeah, and you, yeah. you sort of inspired, yeah. you one of the people who inspired me. Obviously, I was also studying marketing, yeah. but I have an understanding, but you pushed me to understand what's okay. It doesn't matter, man. I mean, this guy is doing his Venda. He's you even using too. Venda to, 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 to create That's his content. Yeah. I had to come up with the idea of talking to celebrities and that. So you inspired me. I just want to acknowledge you for thank that. Thank you so much, man. And really and so, thank you. And it it's it's it started as like you trying to mimic your grandfather. Yes. Uh, and 
obviously it was not intentional yes. uh, according to our understand no, can you just take us through how the skits uh the the perfume pe- pe- yeah. and all those skits that you were making tell hey, hey, all these <laughs> all these videos uh, how did this start and w- how did you realize that okay this is something this that something, i should yeah. stick to i think um so when i did the like i had mentioned earlier that i was um i started doing events yes yes hosting parties um, I mean, I'm very, I'm, I'm a dope. You no, know, I throw parties, bruh. Like, yeah. People throw parties. Yes. And then there's a DJ cut to party. Yeah. Where there's just <laughs> my parties are crazy. Yes. You know? So I throw parties. <laughs> and um, this one time, uh, I was just playing with my phone. Mm. I switched on the recorder, and I was inviting people to come to my party. Yeah. And I just. I was like, I want to go look to me. Zeke party army. Go look to me. Zeke zom nandi. Zeke go lavan tra. Nak zom nandi tra. La gala. Nuri eh eh look. Zeke zom nandi. Yeah. Young king to size slender ma pakisha. Young king tra. Sugar daddy. Sugar ma. Young king clean zen. I posted that video. Yeah. People went crazy for that video. Yeah. And I was like, what? And and you were just promoting. And I was just promoting my party. Yeah. The party was packed. People were. Going what? crazy. People came. Yeah, well, the parties, the parties were. Look, my parties are a jump. I'm not gonna Man. lie. Like oh, I throw okay. two parties. Yeah. Yeah. But that party was just too much. Too much. Yeah. And this one time I was driving. I think I was driving to. I think I was driving to a gig. Yeah. I was with a friend of mine. Yeah. This guy. Yeah. So as we were driving, this is a true story. Yeah. Nothing that I do talk about in my videos is ever a lie. I don't make up jokes. Or no, I talk about my life. Yes. Yes, yes. So I was driving, you can tell I smell nice. Yeah, yeah. no, you are. You smell, yeah. <laughs> so the, the, the perfume video. It's a true story. Yes, yes. So, so I was driving. This mm. guy, mm. A friend of mine, is like, Antona, eh, 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 Yeah. I'm like, oh, I'm not twins. Eh. Oh, oh, you want a so cologne? I gave, him, I gave him my cologne. Yeah. Right. I had saved up for that cologne. As we're driving, this guy called, keeps on calling. And I'm like, oh, I'm not going to be a kid. You know? This is not censored, yeah? No, nah, no, nah, it's not. fine. It's going to it's gonna be adjusted. Okay, nicely. it's like... In- <laughs> <laughs> Jandi. For, for, vendors, for vendors will understand what he's saying. <laughs> so it's like, Jandi, you some not Yeah. So we passed a couple of traffic traffic signs. Yeah. This guy kept on going. And I'm like, no, man. Now you want to finish the whole thing. Go, fah, fah, fah. But, and I'm like, no. And then he went, fah. And I'm like, no, my man. Look. Yeah. This thing is expensive. It's expensive. Nah, that's, for this maybe thing. you didn't know because remember there's perfumes and there's colognes. Yes, yeah. you understand. You, and should, you should have explained to him. No, I told him because now the next thing the whole car smells like him now. And you know, usually when you smell nice, yeah. when you meet someone, when you hug women, they're always the first compliment. Oh, yes, you smell yes, nice. yes. Now this guy wants to take my shine. Every time he was, <laughs> he smell oh, nice. I'm yeah. like, no way. He's, He's gonna it's, smell it's like my you, cologne. Yeah. I kept on telling them, hey, I'm the cologne. Yeah. It smells like it's, it's mine. So it's after that, business. then that's content. After that, I dropped that video. Yeah. Ne? Yeah. I dropped that video. It hits. I don't know. Yeah, no. I mean, viral. I mean, me. My your first video was that one. The first one I saw from you. So it goes viral. One. Yeah. After it goes viral, I get a phone call. Mm. I got a phone call. I'm like, hey, who's this? Just hey, like that. Listen. Um. It's like three weeks in. Yeah. It's like, hey, listen. You're talking to so and so from uh, Content Connect Africa. Yeah. I'm like, okay. Sure. Yeah, we work with Vodacom and we work with MTN. Yes. All right. Yeah. We'd like to have a meeting with you. I'm like, meeting with me about what? About like, what? In your video. I'm like, my video. Yeah. Which video? What did I say me in the video? Like, yeah. No, there's this specific video. Yeah. I'm like, okay. I go there. Hey, these guys have a check. Hey, they have a bag for me. I'm like, hey, you want to give me this much money for that video? They're like, yeah, this is how much we want to give you. Yeah. In fact, we can come up with a partnership and you can do one, two, three for us. Yeah. And you get one, two, three. I'm like, hey. Just like that. So me being me, because I'm very, as I read a lot, right? Yes, so yes. I'm like, okay, give me the paperwork. Let me see. I check the paper. Paperwork is standard. Yes. Sign the paperwork. Hey, my man, I got a bag. Yeah. From no. that video, I'm like, eh. we're gonna talk about that because you know? obviously, bag, <laughs> bag, it's something that obviously follows uh, whatever that you do. It's, it's, yeah. it's a yeah. byproduct. It's a byproduct. Yeah. True. So, um, 
I want to understand the day because now, obviously, when you started, it was more of okay, you were not expecting, it no, just happened, it just happened, yes. Yeah. So now, after realizing, oh, wait, 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 yeah. wait, sorry, yeah, it was the accent. So, I was telling you about the accent, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you saw that ex- the accent, right? Yeah, that outer ego I have, which is a booty nice time, yeah. My grandfather used to speak Zulu like that, yes, 100 percent. So he was a he was a he was a pastor. He was he was a yeah. some fundies. Yes. So every time he meets a person, oh, oh, right? Right? Even yeah. when he speaks to 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 white people, yeah. how are you? Are you? Eh? Yeah. Mixes a bit of, and how are you doing? I'm saying in Tonga, right? Are you fine? Oh yeah. You know, white guys like, I, 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 I guess, I guess. I'm fine. Yeah. yeah. It's so it, it's so I took that in. Mm. So when I did that video, ultimately. That alter ego, that sort of voice yeah. came up, came about, and I knew that this is something special. Yeah, this is not me because I used to think to myself, I'm not that funny. Yes, but yes. when I do that, that that thing, people just like you're funny, Tom. Yeah, you, you're funny. So that that now that brings on the next question that I have for you, because obviously from the beginning you you didn't do it intentionally. Now that now you know, what way you moves, because obviously. You you get to see your, okay this thing this bag like mm. you just mentioned mm. that they called you mm. so what was you what were your reactive moves after that so my thing was use the skits yeah to promote the DJ oh, promote okay. myself yeah but it got so much attention yes then the DJ then became the DJ silent. became you know yes and a lot okay. of people were like paying me to come DJ but when I DJ they'll be like nigeni <laughs> mike Yo, nangu cut. Yo, you know, and girls yeah. would be like, "Oh my goodness, <laughs> now my bell." I'm like, yeah. "Okay, I don't want your teeth, but okay, let turn the mile." You know, yeah. so I'd, I'd be getting, you know, that attention, but yeah. it would be more of nigeni mic. You wanna hear what he's gonna say? Yes. So I'd be DJing, and I'd obviously intro or say something, say something, maybe drop a line. People would laugh. Yeah. When I DJ, so it worked. It balanced each other. Yeah. Um, I mean. So you you try to market your DJing, but yeah. it, the 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 skits were just too loud. They were, they are, they were just. They, they were, were too loud. But I also want to understand because you have a little bit of incorporation with Venda, the language. Yeah. And and uh, what I've learned is you're proudly Venda. Yeah. And people should know that you you actually love being. Venda. And, yeah. No. Hundred percent. Yeah. I not mean. So what was also. Including Venda and Zulu, sort of uh, a way of um, just to strategize and also just to show people that you are proudly Venda. So for me, can I be honest with you? Yeah. Um, a lot of people, when I started doing skits, a lot of people were not owning Obama Venda. Oh, A lot yeah. of people were not yes. coming out to say I'm Venda. Yes, Vendor. yes, yes. Um, there was your Glenn Lewis. They were not owning up to say I am actually Venda. Yeah. You know, all this. Yeah. the only people you'd see that are Venda mm. was Mubango. Yes, you know. Yes. Other than that, no one was coming out to say, "Hey, I'm Venda." It was as if it's taboo. Mm. So I was like, "Fuck it." Yeah. I'm gonna come out and say it. If you have a problem, then psh, yeah, tough. And then people were like, "Ah, I want to call you Venda again." I I'm like, "Not a Venda. Take no card." You know. So that's how I came about, and mm. just to show people that I appreciate um, my roots, Nelly Venda. Yeah. 100%. 100%. Yeah. So I just wanted people to re, they must appreciate who they are. Yeah. And um also we 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 have a voice as people. Yes. That's 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 why I did did, did it like that. Would would you say you had gained a lot of vendor followers or I it did. was just a mix of I did. It was a mix of everything, eh? Yeah. It was a mix of everything. Um I think people just like something that is um different. Yeah. Something that is fresh. And the person who is true to themselves yeah people love you i mean i'll make you an example with you mm. um there's a lot of people who make videos yeah but how you were making your videos yes yeah, you were doing phone calls and you, you understand yeah. it was as if it's a prank call but this thing is dope yeah it's unique we we like that because yeah. it's unique it's you yeah. do you understand what i mean yeah. and you end up owning that that exactly. image yeah and it becomes part of part and parcel of your brand so okay. people appreciate something like that yes. so for me i felt like it gave the the opportunity mm. for people to come out and say hey, nah, 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 yes. i can be funny or nah, 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 i'm mm. intelligent yeah. and nah, nah, then nah, i'm creative at one two three so it yeah. opened up that space for what, people. what do you think in your skits alone was you uh 
what was your unique selling point in a way? Because obviously everyone was creating skits there. Yeah. I, I think my unique selling point is my uh, million dollar love. Oh, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And my, my, your accent. my accent. Yeah. I mean, my, my love is a color tune that has made money. Uh, that's, what, that's what we're going <laughs> to get to. We're going to talk to about that, man. So, so, but I think my, the, the most unique selling point was the confidence, the accent, and the love. Yeah. Yeah. And it also just my face. I have a face where when I have that, you just think like, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you have a funny face, you know. So Unless if I'm quiet. When I'm quiet, I'm pretty serious. Yeah, yeah. So with obviously with all that happening, uh, comedy, stand up comedy. Mm. I I like to believe you. C- you can correct me if I'm wrong. I like to believe that you started with skits, and yes. then now you thought about uh, stand up comedy. comedy. Yeah. So. How did you structure that and how was it, what was the numbers compared to, okay, skits and were you getting gigs of you doing... To do uh, stand-up comedy. Yes. So <clears throat> I did uh, I did a show. Yeah. Um, funny enough, the um, first time I did stand-up comedy, Yeah. it was my own show. I booked the Joburg Theater. What? I advertised the Joburg Theater. Yes. I said, I'm doing a show at the Jobek Theatre. Yeah. Come through. And the skits, obviously, because I was doing the skits, I was putting out skits. Yes, there. yes. People came. So your skits were like maybe a marketing mechanism. 100%. Because also remember, that you want. I also studied uh, uh, marketing. marketing. Yes. So for me, <laughs> I was like, ah, strategy. This yes. is going to work for me. So so I did the skits. I, I, I invited people to come through to, to the Joburg Theatre. I invited a couple of uh, media houses and whatnot. Yeah. They came through. The first time I performed stand-up comedy, mm. I did an hour of jokes that I'd done um, the skits. Yeah. But I prolonged the skits, mm. added more ingredients oh, to make the, oh, the, the, yes, the, the, the content yes, yes. of the actual Cause, show. Because I was yeah. about to ask, okay, Pella, when you do skits, it's more of, okay, you can even write down what you're going to say yeah. and structure what sort of angle you want to have it and stuff. But when it comes to stand-up comedy, now you're just yeah. standing there and yeah. you have to think and relate with yeah. the audience. So, so with stand-up comedy, it's a very different thing because you have to rehearse the jokes. Yes. You have to make yourself laugh, but you have to also know how to make other people laugh. Yeah. So I did my first show at the Jobek Theatre. Yeah. Um, I took that money. I went on a vacation. Yeah. <laughs> with the girl I was dating at the time, I was like, "Baby, send him my Some mama jokes are sneaky, man." Yeah. So, so you know. we, would you say joke or joking or making jokes has been like one of your uh, traits? It has been. I think there are times where um, telling jokes or skits or just being funny yeah. has paid me. Maybe 20 or 35 mm. times more than DJing has paid me in one thing. But don't, don't, I see you breathing heavy. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, I mean, there's money in comedy, you know, but um, there's money in anything that you have a passion for. In oh. anything you have a passion for, there's oh, money. Yeah, yeah, now it makes sense. If you don't have a passion for anything, it's yeah. not going to pay off. So, it's a good thing when talent yeah. is mixed with passion. Yes. It works. But if there's just passion, there's no talent, it's a bit difficult. But if there's passion and there's talent, you're going to make money. You know, the way you're saying these things, it's like you understand more about this passion, talent. I think people know okay, there's talent, there's passion, there's skills. According to your own understanding, what would you say these are the talents and how can one maybe discover them? Because there are people who are talented, but they don't even know. You understand? Do, do you know, um, it's the craziest thing. How you discover your talent yeah. is talent is a byproduct of living your life. Mm. So how, mm. how mm. you even discover it, it's sort of a, it just comes. It's a byproduct yes. of it. But yeah. if you're not dipping into everything and living your life to the fullest, you'll never know. There's this one specific thing that you... Only you do nice, man. You know, it could be... I'll make you a simple example. It yeah. could be baking. Yes. You just think, ah, I mean, I'm a biscuits. I just make biscuits. Because someone's like, man, like your biscuits are nice. Are nice. 
And you figure like this thing, I'm actually very good at it. And I love it. And when I started doing comedy, I trust me, I didn't want to do stand up. I didn't want to stand in front of people and tell jokes. For what? Come, if I DJ, I don't have to talk to you. Because yeah. I have a thing of, I didn't want to talk to people. Oh, yes. Like, yes. I want to make you laugh, but I want to talk to you. Yeah. So now doing stand-up comedy, you now have to talk to people. Yes. You, you have, have to, to engage with people. Mm. Now the crowd, if your joke is not funny, the crowd is not going to move. Yes. And if you're nervous, the crowd can tell that you're nervous. You understand? Mm. And in any anything that you feel scared to do, mm. therein lies the secret to your talent. Is it? But how do you then overcome the fear and even harness that thing? Because obviously it so, needs to be harnessed. So, yes. Even yeah. to this point, I still get nervous. I, I travel, I go to other countries outside the country and yes. I have to grab the mic and make people... I still get nervous. Yeah, it's always uh, going to be there. Nerves are there. But yeah. how you harness that thing is, honestly speaking, yeah. any individual, mm. you need to have... Please don't get me wrong. Yeah. You need to have something you live by. Like, when I say something you live by, mm. I don't want to be contradictive. There are people who live by religion, there are people who live through spirituality. Oh, but there has to be something that you live by. So that thing that scares you, yes, you pray or talk to whatever thing that you live yes, by, yes, and you say to yourself, "I'm going to jump. Yeah. Please catch me." Yes, and That's... that whatever you believe in mm. will catch you. Yeah, once it catches you, and that thing puts money in your pocket, my man, you're on the right way. You're on the right path. But one thing for sure is, mm. you are not dope, my nigga. Someone else is dope. Yeah. There's 3,000 no-chill gods out there. Yeah. There's 30,000 DJ Katus out there. Yeah. But you know what's the difference? Mm. I know I am DJ Katu. You know you are no-chill god. Yeah. So you tell yourself that thing and you say every day, I'm going to show up. Yeah. I'm going to be the best that I was before. Yes. Yesterday, before three episodes, before whatever. <laughs> I'm going to keep being the best. Yeah. And I'm going to keep rocking. Even on my worst days, I'm going to keep rocking. Yeah. And that's how you start harnessing it. And educate hey people don't want to read guys read books eh bruh I mean, hey me i read books my man me i read no, no, books. I, I also read as you can see these are books that i just took out of my library i just decorate you know, so, i read so yeah, so, so so read also read books study people study people that are doing what you're doing yeah Bro, that's a million dollar advice man and most of the people really they're just gonna listen to this and do nothing you know what? That's a powerful statement that you, you say. You know why people are not gonna. Some people are not gonna. Some people are gonna do something. Some people are not gonna do anything based mm. off of one thing. What? It's nice being comfortable. Exactly. Ah, being comfortable. <laughs> ah, my man is nice. You think right now if you say to me, tell me a joke, I'll tell you a joke. I don't. I can't think of a joke right now. Yeah. But have I not made you laugh or made you? Gig? I have. You do you understand? Yeah. So it just comes. Yeah. But when I have to now go present or do corporate work i do corporate mc <laughs> and i have to tell business people jokes and they're very stuck up they, they're like who is this guy i'm like yeah. oh, now i must make this white people laugh yes you know i must make the ceo laugh yeah i write i practice yes. i put myself in that situation and, and that that is not being comfortable that's not being comfortable oh, yeah. that's me out of my comfort zone but if you give me a phone right now or you give me the cameras and you say tell me a joke i'll make you laugh yeah but that's me not comfortable Right. So now you, you spoke about people, some people will be like, ah, who's this guy? So then now I want to understand, as you were coming up as a, a, a skits and comedian, obviously social media that we're dealing with, there are people who don't understand what you're doing. You, 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 you post a video, you get this negative. Or, and, and also, please, yeah. can you also just define what is negativity in terms of social media yeah. space yeah. and stuff yeah. like that? Because yeah. we see it differently. How did you handle criticism and also negativity uh, when you were coming up? Obviously, now I'm sure yeah, you're now, over there. Yeah. So, so coming up, it's a, it's something that kills a lot of people. Yeah. It kills a lot of people's dreams as well. Yeah. Because if you think about it, someone you post a video, someone says you're not funny. Yeah. And another person says, ah, I don't like your nose. Yeah. You have a nose like Ramaphosa. Mm. And I'm like, what? Right now, if you tell me I have a nose like Ramon, I'm like, man, you mean I'm worth billions? Yo. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's how you handle it. Now I handle it different. Yeah. But coming up, it hits you. Yes. It affects your ego. It affects your creativity. It affects your outlook. Can, can you just please put it close to... I feel like I'm, I'm missing a lot of information. I'm working. Hello? Yeah. Hello? 
Hello? Yes, yes, we are rocking. Hello? We are rocking. Hello? <laughs> oh, we are rocking, yes. Yeah. So, so, so you, 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 coming up, it affects you. Yeah. There's a lot of things that you have to deal with yeah. personally yeah. before you let another person affect you. Yeah. So, criticism will be there. Cristiano Ronaldo, Lionel Messi. Everyone. Everyone. Even Jesus Christ got Je- criticized. Jesus Christ gets cri- criticized. Everyone gets criticized. So people who criticize you, mm. you either learn from them or you 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 we let can, them break you down. Yeah. One thing I will tell you is, yeah. right, learn to build with the rocks that are, show, are thrown at you. Yes. Learn to build. Yeah, no. Nah. You understand? Putting into practical example like give giving an example a, a, a practical example um let's see it's okay so someone 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 hits me with a comment to say um yeah um i liked uh okay i'll make an example yeah uh, skumba is funnier than you oh why yeah. would you do jokes because skumba is funnier than you yeah do you understand yeah Someone says to me, Skumba is funnier than me. Mm. I'm like, my guy, you don't understand. Mm. Yes, it's Kumba. I'm like, yes, yes, yes. He's yeah. doing very well. Doing very well. This guy is funny. Yeah. I want to surpass this guy. Yes. I look up to him. I want to surpass. So you understand? Yeah, so he inspires you. It's he's not a inspired, competition. He's not a, but you, as a hater, you are looking at it in a different way. Yeah. For me, I don't even want to be like him. It's, I'm sure he doesn't even want to be like me. Yeah. He's looking he's exactly in, or another comedian in pop pops or 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 some or whichever comedian yes you are, you understand yeah. you are looking at it in that sense or you say to me oh you know um mr jesse q mixes plays better my piano yeah. than you do yes my guy i'm not jesse q i'm not that guy it's you. i am katu yeah and what you say mm. is cool yeah. now you've given me something to work on now mm. i must look at oh so it's kumba it's funny because it what topics that is talk about? Oh, so Jesse oh, Q mixes yeah. very nice. Oh, he plays this type of music. Okay. Mm. So me, I play this. So if I incorporate this and this, it will work. Yeah. You've given me something to build on. Yeah. But if I look at it and then I'm like, yeah, but it means you hate me. Mm. It means me, I'm a loser. Yeah. Nah, man, I'm not. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, I see you. And if 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 ninety percent of people on your comment section are saying or are laughing, are saying this is dope. Yeah. Are commenting positive and that one person is saying negative. It doesn't necessarily that mean that that person is wrong. It just means that person majority speaks more volume yes. than the minority. Yeah, they might not even understand your content. I might just rather focus on the majority. Yes. The minority, my man, you can go suck it. Yes. So as you see what you're saying there is powerful because you know what people do? They post a picture or whatever that they're posting on social media. They get like 10 people saying, oh, this is nice. And one says, yo, you're so ugly. And they delete. And they delete, yes. I think it's negative is more powerful than positive if you look. So, so let me tell you something that happened to me recently. Yeah. So 2020, 2021, 2022. I posted a video 2020. I was driving. Yeah. Moment, I was fat, eh? <laughs> like I was fat. I was fat, 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 fat. The fat. money was coming. Uh, <laughs> no, the, uh, you know, funny, the money is, yo, nice now. Exactly. More than that time. Is it? I will talk about it. Yeah. So, I was fat. I think it's because I was, you know, I was, I was, someone was cooking for me every day. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> okay, that makes sense. <laughs> it makes sense. Trust so, me, so, I understand. So, 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 but, but, but I was fat because I had let myself go. Yeah. I'm a person who gyms. I, I hike a lot. Yes. I run. I gym. You cannot read and not to focus on your body. I, you it, it won't make so sense. I wasn't yeah. doing those things. Yeah. You know, I was drinking. I'm not a person who... I don't drink. Anymore. I don't drink. I don't smoke. No. Okay. I don't drink. I don't smoke. Yeah. You'll see me at the gig. Yeah. You'll see me holding a glass. You'll yeah. think... No, my man. I've mixed energy drink with water. It looks like... Yeah. It's, it's something. Some champagne. It's yeah. nothing. Mm. So... I was I wasn't taking care of myself. Yeah. So I've lost I lost weight because now I went back to jogging, taking care of my body, eating healthy, changed my diet, yes. I'm fasting, I'm yes. doing all these nice yeah. things. Yeah. Posted a picture. Post this picture, people. One of the comments is like, "What happened to your body? What happened to your weight? Why are you so skinny?" Mm. I'm like, 
when I was fat, you didn't say, why am I so fat? Yes. Now I've, I've gotten back to the, the body I like. My yeah. clothes look nice on me. My yeah. drip is amazing. Ex- exactly. Now you want, to, what do you want from me? Yeah. You That's understand? People so I realized that I'm not going to be able to please everyone. I'm not money. Yeah. Trust. Hey. So, yeah, no. So now, DJ Kato, I would I want nice to drink time. my water, but it's branded. No, 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 drink. No. Oh, we are free here. God is great. I mean, we are free here. So I have closed this part. <laughs> no, no, I mean, even if the people go by, I mean, that would be influencing, you know. 100%. That would be influencing. So I'd we're... rather you go by and post a picture and be like, can't you drink sparkling water? <laughs> 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 so, I mean, D- this DJ card doing this, I would be nice time. Yes. How do you wear these names? So Abuti Nice Time is and DJ Katu is the same person. Yeah. But DJ Katu is much more of a ish, a DJ Katu is a superstar. Hey, this guy is <laughs> ex, you know? Can, yeah. Like even when I look at DJ Katu, I'm like, hey DJ Katu, this is mm, you. Yeah. When I look at Abuti Nice Time, is a is Abuti Nice Time is that um alter ego that I have when I do my skits. Yeah. And I would, I, would, I would like to think that DJ Katu is a brand that you branded yourself and yes. then Abuti Nice Time is what came out of DJ Cut came out of DJ Cut, so it's a yeah. it's a sort of a, a byproduct of DJ Cut. Yes, and it's something that I I I, I use for my skits. And it's it's aligning to nicely. Hundred percent, yes. Yeah, yes, good. Aligns. You studied, like you mentioned earlier, you studied at Boston. You were focusing on radio, and I, I tracked. You were also you worked on some few radio stations, Tembisa. Yes, yes, uh, and that's 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 why I did my. Um, my first radio station I worked at internship, I did uh, Voice of Tembisa. Yes, Voice yeah. of Tembisa. And how did that experience help you to get where you are now? Um, it's, you know, I feel like it, I like this question. This question is dope. Yeah. Every opportunity you are given in life, yeah. you need to use it to grow, use it to learn. Yeah. Or... If you don't, you are going to keep learning the same uh, lessons over and over. Mm. So the same structures that are at Voice of Timbisa mm. are the same structures that are at Radio Today, the same structures that are at YFM, yeah. same structures that are at maybe Metro or whatever. Yeah. They might just be, the scales might just be bigger. Yes, but yes. the structures are the it's same. The same yeah. So how you treat the team and how you treat your job at entry level is how you're going to treat your job even when you... Yes. When you, when you, so, like, for instance, I knew that the DJing and the skits and the comedy mm. is a career. So I took it serious from when, even mm. when I started. Yes. Even to this point, I still take it seriously. Yeah. So if I, don't, I didn't take it seriously, then I probably wouldn't take it seriously now. And I wouldn't, you know, be surviving. Yeah. So that's, that's the experience I got from it. It's amazing. So you... What you're saying is what you were doing at the voice of Tembisa, you went with it up until because I heard that you also went to YFM. Yeah. You were a producer there. I worked at YFM for seven years. What? Yeah. So as a producer. As a producer. So and uh, we 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 we, I contributed there and there for the breakfast show. Yeah. Um, Meaning I would go on on, would talk. Yeah. Uh, But present then the the breakfast show. But mainly I was a producer. Producing obviously it wasn't something that you wanted to do forever. No. Hence you even ventured into now becoming a DJ there. F- yes. F- was it a strategy kind of thing? Everything in my life is a strategy. And it's planned. Yeah. So I know <laughs> this is going to take me here. It's going yeah. to because if you just go, just hoping, just hoping, just yeah. that's good. Yeah. But also you just you need to have some sort of a backup plan. Yeah. Because um, at the time the biggest hip-hop show yeah. at the time i produced the biggest hip-hop show at the time people don't know this that the biggest hip-hop show which uh scoop Makatini and yeah. uh Lomo were presenting as the producer for that mm. show it was called uh so you've uh, been in the game for the longest time yeah something something got what I yeah forgot. you know as producing that from there i went on to produce the the drive time show mm-hmm. i did it for like two months yeah. With uh, Mo Flavor. When Mo Flavor, Mo from Mo Flavor, I did the breakfast show. I worked with Uncle Tap. I mean, I produced for Bonang. When I started at YFM, I was Bonang's producer. Is it? Yeah. Hey, how is she? She's an amazing person. Is it? Yes. Like personally? 
Personally, I mean, like I said, mm. it's a working environment. Yeah. So we were professional. Yeah. So she's um, professional. She was, yeah, she's very. Pro- but you know, one person, she was very punctual. Is it? She was never late. Mm. Bonang was never late. So it matters, ne? Yeah, it's it matters. She's you, never late. Do you think it's contributed to her success now? It contri- people take themselves seriously. People who take themselves seriously and what they do seriously, they become a success. If you don't do that, my man, you're not gonna. It's a formula. Success. It's a formula. I'm learning him. I like or like I said, I I worked with different people. I've produced people's shows. Yeah. You know? Um, but even in doing and working with people, the mm. people who are on radio today and are successful today. Yeah. Is because of even when they were working, yeah, they were very su- they were very uh, uh, successful in their minds. In their minds, yes, and they were very professional even to begin with. Hence, yeah. today they are doing the shows that they are doing. Cesar yeah. Lomi is at KFM, yeah. Ta- Tando Tabete, uh, Ayanda MVPs. People I worked with, yeah, you know, more flavor. People I worked, um, Uncle Tep. And and with. what have you learned collectively out of those people? The mindset is the, it the mindset. The one, the one thing they all have one thing in common. Thing in common, yeah. Being professional and the passion and the love for radio, oh. for broadcast, it's, yeah. it's it's big. So you would you say to whoever that is looking to uh, at maybe becoming a radio presenter, they should have those kind yes. of traits. Yes, yes. Yeah. You need to in, um, take yourself and take your job seriously. Yeah. You know, uh, we were talking about earlier before we started the, the recording. Mm. We were talking about how you were telling me how you started in the streets. Yes. Recording. Yes. And now, the, now there's a studio. And yeah. It's because you take yourself seriously. Yeah. If you're not taking yourself seriously, there's no growth in what you're doing. Yeah, no. I true. Let's step into music, man. You're, I mean, I feel like music is, is you. Yes. I you, love music. You focus. Uh, ah. That's that's everything oh, else is just music. coming. Yes. Because, I mean, th- th- there's a saying that says, when you focus on what is aligned to you, everything else focuses on you. True. Yeah, especially things that are meant for you. So you're no longer going around 100%. asking, trying to look. And everything, comedy and skits, all these things are just coming. But you know, we would see the bigger thing is music. Yeah. DJ Kato. So is DJ Kato a hip-hop DJ or any sort of music? D- I like that. That's dope. So... I'm um I played hip hop. Yeah. I still play hip hop even to this point. Yeah. Hip hop and Afro beats. Yeah. Very good at it. Yeah. Extremely good at it. Is it? Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Young dude. Um it's a it's a I'm a musician. Yeah. So with being a musician, you are able to tap into different genres of music. Yeah. There are people who as I'm speaking right now, who are going to be watching this and be like, why is he not sticking to one thing and, you know, being passionate? <laughs> so please don't. So I play, I play, I play hip hop. No, I'm a hip hop DJ yeah. and uh, I play piano. Yes. A piano, uh, obviously. Private school piano. Oh, is it? The, yeah. ni- the, the, the nice children. Yeah. I think it's, it's very nice to play Chuku 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 yeah, chuk. It's nice. very nice. They're nice. But there are 20 other DJs who are chuku 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 chuk. Yes, chuk. yes. Do you understand? It's just a lot, yeah. So if 20 DJs are chuku 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 chuk, mm. what makes you stand out? Yeah. Do you understand? Mm. So I feel like sometimes um, you find it's a party, there's a 20 lineup, uh, 20 DJ lineup, mm. there's no hip hop DJ. Yeah. I'll play hip hop, everyone is going to be happy. Yeah. You break that, yes. that, that, that thing, yeah. you understand? So for me, those are the two biggest genres I play. Yeah. There isn't I'm so let's say I'm a hip hop DJ. Yeah. So I fly out, I'm going to uh Uganda. Yeah. This one time I was going to play in Uganda. Yes. I go to play in Uganda, we we're doing a, a road trip for seven hours in Uganda. Mm. I was doing uh some top ass thing. Yeah. So I'm there, these people are like, No, teach us music from South Africa. Yeah. You know? Yeah. There's a piano, it's very popular. Yeah. And at the time, you people are asking you about a yes. piano. What are you gonna do? You have to play. So luckily, I've got this USB that has a piano. Is it? Plug it in, start playing music in the bus, in the top bus. Oh, oh yeah. I like top buses. So hey, we're touring there. We are it partying. Was nice, yeah. These people speak a language I can't understand. You know, but yeah. they are vibing to the music that yeah. as South African we are now uh, taking out to the world. Mm. And I was like, this is a gap. Yeah. If I can be able to go to more African countries and play this, I go to Zambia, I yeah. play this. Yeah. I went to Kenya, I'm going yeah. to Rwanda, I'm playing all of these, these yeah. are my piano songs. So it makes perfect sense for me to 
distribute mm. that to the world. Yeah, but also, uh, you just mentioned my piano. The it's like it's, it's become it's actually a big thing now. It's a very internationally. Big thing. It's a very big as a thing. DJ and someone who understands music. What do you see as it as it like? Maybe a trend or something that maybe a lot of people are not seeing with regards to my piano itself. So here, so here's the thing. Yeah. Um, I'm a piano. Mm. There's two things that need to be done. Yeah. With I'm a piano. From my point of view. Yes. Please, number tell one. Tell them. Tell them. Number one. <laughs> yeah. Let's stop gatekeeping. Please, you don't own a piano. No one owns this thing. Yes. That's number one. Yeah. Number two. Mm. If everyone does the choco 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 choco, it's going to get irritating. Yeah, and it's not gonna be viable in the long run because a, a child in 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 Rwanda, a child in Kenya, a child in in wherever can chuku 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 chuku, and that song blows there. Now, I'm not saying let's yeah. hog the the, the, the no sound. U- there's no uniqueness. There's Anyone can do it. But however, when you 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 look at there is that point. There is the, those producers and those those artists that give us a piano that's memorable. Yes. You look at your Kelvin Momo. Yes. You can play a 2020 20 album yeah Kelvin Momo today. Yeah. You look at your Kabza. You can still play Kabza's music today. Yeah. You look at Does it lose value? This doesn't lose So I'm not saying every DJ must make that. Yes. I'm saying get your 15 minutes of fame with your chuku 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 chak. Yes. And then get into a subgenre of ama piano where if you want to play a soulful piano or deep or whatever you understand yes, because yeah. ama piano is here to stay and it's something that as africans south africans mm. we must embrace and not let it die because mm-hmm. i don't think it's going to die anytime soon it's something we must embrace and we must love the fact that it enables us to collaborate with people outside the country yes. bigger artists yeah. who want this platform yeah, no, I feel you. I'm not a musician, but I mean, obviously, it's always good to talk about things like this, yeah, you know, yeah, and yeah. also try to understand from your side of musical. Um, obviously, you have this music thing in you mm. that made you DJ car to today. 100%. And you actually have your own recording level. So tell me about it and how is it uh, impacting uh, to so other upcoming uh, artists. So, so for me, honestly speaking, I'm very much open to working with new uh, artists. Yeah. But the reason I did the record label was yeah. so that I don't sign to anyone. If I want to take out music, yeah, I publish it. I publish my own music. Is it my own? Th- do you understand? Yeah. So I and I license my own music. And why? Why? What is the reason for that? Is because I want to eat the publisher's money. <laughs> understand i want to eat the producers man yeah do, would you advise I want to eat the record labels money but would you advise upcoming artists to be signed or to be it's it's up to you yeah. but to be signed is a very good thing yeah remember i've got partnerships that i have yeah right within the record label and yeah. also part of the record label is because when i started doing the skits yeah i became the only person in the world to have a voice only color tune bro so that voice only color tune that made money for me, yeah. it's registered under my record label. Yeah. My laugh yeah. is registered under my record it's, label. It's your IP. You understand? Yeah. So I needed to own that. Yeah. And for me to own it, to own publishing masters and all, I needed to go through a route of owning a record label yeah. and structuring that record label. And obviously I collaborate with other upcoming DJs. Yeah. I mean, if you're a DJ and you, you have a project that you're working on, mm. I will help you with the PR, help you with the marketing, help mm. you with the distribution. Once the project is done, if you want to continue, you continue. If not, you go your own way. I go my own way. I take my share, you take your share. Yeah. I don't own anything that sh- that is yours. Yeah. So I felt it as a, it's a your to answer your question of would I advise people to, um, side to get signed or to push it on their own? Yeah, you can do it on your own, but it's very limiting. It's very limiting if you don't have connections. Yeah. But if you have connections, i.e. DJ Katu, <laughs> <laughs> they can come to you. No, I'm just saying, mm. when I did my record label, luckily mm. there were people who, mm. some of my friends work at Sony, yeah. Sony Africa, yeah. some of my friends work at uh, Universal. So so what was the common talk there? Because obviously you didn't want to be signed. So what were you asking? Like advice on how they No, I came straight. When you give me the contract, I told you straight, Mm. I'm going to open a record label. This thing is going to be under me. They said, okay, sharp, go do your thing. I didn't go left and right. No, I did from the jump. Yeah. So from the jump when I blew up, that's what I did. I didn't even waste time. So 
does your recording label like sign everyone or you have like specific type of I, people? I, m- I'm very open to say, because now I want to get into doing um, uh, Afro pop, yeah. Afro soul, Afro pop this yeah. and, and gospel. Is it? Yeah. Why? It's money. <laughs> that's my only there's reason. There's money, ne? Yeah, that's... Th- and there's small... It's a small niche, but... Besides, b- besides... It's a very big market. Mm. But there's money. Mm. You know? Because money... Remember... Even gospel. Do you think, honestly, not to sound like arrogant or anything or Gospel ignorant? has money, my mm. friend. Gospel. Hey, uche, sunamanta. <laughs> gospel has money. <laughs> You're playing games. <laughs> there's money there. You mm. know why? Yeah. Every Sunday was listening to gospel. Yeah. Was, right? Yeah. Churches. How many churches are there? Many. And if your artist is there performing at all these big churches and you just I just want to and then that will mama they are happy. Oh, I'm telling you, I'm going to say I'm mm. them my contributions. <laughs> I'm looking at it in a business way. Yeah. I'm a businessman after all. Yeah. Do you understand? So 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 but besides that, there's also just portraying and giving out that message to people. Music yeah. is music is a message it's from a God message. to people. Yeah. That's how I see it. Yeah. Now nah, that's but uh, when you're coming up with this thing, obviously it, it was your first time from being an artist and DJ. Now you want to have your recording label. Uh, uh, what challenges did you face? Uh, obviously, when you're starting up until so now, the challenge is the same one that every artist faces. Funny enough. Yeah. Biola. What's Biola? Biola is paying for radio stations to play your music. Is, is that a system? What <laughs> is it? It's a thing. I've, I've never paid. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. They like my face. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but 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 getting your song to be on rotation yeah. in radio stations is a very challenging thing. Or on TV, it's a very challenging thing. So um, I think those are... And, and, and also finding your, your image. <clears throat> Because you always be categorized with other artists that are making the same music. Yes, yes. Of and course. some of those artists are bigger than you. Yes. You release a song today, Gabza releases a song today, my friend. I'm sorry. Gabza's <laughs> song's going to get attention. But also, what is it that you are doing in the long run to find yourself in that same status? But now you mentioned about gatekeepers. So now, as you say that, I kind of feel like automatically the system makes people gatekeepers. The system automatically can make people gatekeepers, but talent. Remember, this is the one thing that you need to realize: is you are doing a podcast. Yeah. There's three thousand podcasts. A lot. There. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. What is different about your podcast is the content that you put out. Yeah. And if you are lucky mm. and you're passionate and you're talented, your thing is gonna get noticed. Of course. It's so that's how it works. I'm, I'm, every, I'm, in every. In every industry, but yeah. remember, you need to have something that you live by. Yeah. It's a very important thing. But Tabazu realizes this too. Yeah. If you don't believe in God, mm. you don't believe in your ancestors, you just live your life as a as an yeah. alien. It's gonna you, be. You, it's gonna be tough for you. It's gonna be difficult. You need to believe in something. Whatever you believe in, you need to work hand in hand with that something. Yeah. I'm not saying go sell your soul. I'm not yeah. Saying, yeah. I believe in God. Hey. Exactly. I mean, I how much is it to sell souls? <laughs> 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 so in terms of ish man i mean i i checked last year you released i think it was an album yeah instrument uh, instrumental one, volume one volume one yes. with uh dj uh, akim akim yeah. this is vendor guy right yeah uh, bruh to be honest I, I think you with Akim, I was listening to it yesterday just to listen to the type of music. I feel yeah. like you, Akim, it's, it's like I even listened to his interview. That guy is good, eh? Yeah. And the combination with that uh, whole project that you guys did, I was, can you just describe? Because according to me, I'm not a music fan, but when I listen to that, that's the type of music I'll listen to personally so what was the process how was the process and yes. what was like okay the main goal what what did you guys say okay let's bake this for 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 whatever that reason was what, what what was the process like i think the one passion we had in common was the love for music yes um so we wanted to do something that is so i came, comes from us he plays tech Afro-tech. Yes, exactly. I I love Afrotech. That's why I related because yeah. so, that's that. Yeah, so he plays Afrotech. So yeah. I was mixing Ama piano and Afrotech, putting it together. 
Eish. That's right. why it was called instrumental volume one. Yeah. So we, we, we fused those two together. Mm. And we did that album in the space of a week. I mean, just shows in, in, in four or five days, the songs, everything were, were done. It was out. We sat in the studio, mm. recorded day and night, recorded, recorded, produced. Yeah. Done. We worked with a whole lot of people. Worked with Murumba Peach. Yes. I was we about to with, ask. With um, Mapara Jazz. We worked with, with, with saxophone guys. I forgot their names. Yeah. All these artists, dope, 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 dope artists. We collaborated with them. We worked with. Um, uh, I think even Reps Bafui was on part of the project. Reps Bafui, yeah. You know, at we, some point I used to confuse you with Reps. I don't know why. No, we don't look <laughs> like. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, but it was a very very dope experience, and we yeah. just wanted to come with some, come up with something, and just give it out to people. Yeah. And we did that album. We dropped it. In fact, it's a year. Yeah, we dropped the, the last album. year. Yeah. We pushed it, and we're just gigging. Gigging, gigging, yeah. gigging, touring and making, you know, people so love the, the sound. And the, the, the one uh, song that you did last year, I think this year, man, in Tuba, is it Tuba? It, 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 Itemba. Itemba with, with the lady and yes, Murumba yes, Peach. with Murumba Peach yeah. and Mbalia Sizu. So, the process, I just want to understand. The process it's, Yes, that. the process. And you know even the, the music video is yeah. dope. I just checked it out. Yeah, shout out. Yeah. You know the crazy thing about Itemba? Mm. Um, <laughs> when, we, when we did the song, yeah. we did the, the, the instrumental for Itemba. Yeah. When once the instrumental for Itemba was done, yeah. um, Mbali came in, recorded, to the, came to the studio. She recorded yeah. um, the, vocal? the vocals. Yeah. And then I don't know when Murumba Pitch rec- recorded. I don't know when they recorded the part yet. I was not there. Did they even go there? Because it's easy these days to just listen to the beat. No, they went to the studio even. and they recorded. Yeah. And then they, I was sent the song to say, hey, cut. I think I was in Venda. Yeah. They said, cut, here's a song. The song is done yeah. by the guy who was uh, mastering. Yes. I was like, which song? Like, Item. I'm like, oh, snap. And then there's a video because, I mean, uh, bruh. The quality, the storyline, yeah. everything. So is the so music dope. video, like I said, it's yeah. partnerships. The music video was, um, I think, was a hundred, hundred or one fifty or two hundred. I'm not sure. Is it two hundred k or one hundred fifty k or something? Like that. To, to to produce to shoot them, yeah. <sighs> That's why I mean this quality thing. <laughs> <laughs> so 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 like, so, so like I was saying, partnerships, and um, so the guys I partnered with, they were like, "Do you want a music video cut?" I was like, yeah. "Okay, yeah." So we've got this budget. I'm like, "Okay," you see, <laughs> and they shot the video. So, so even when we're shooting the video, um, we're just having a having a, a, a nice time. Yeah. Um, the storyline is amazing. You know, yeah. um, I'm helping a sister out do yeah. the mansion. Yes. Building a mansion. Yes. Build the mansion. I even put some little vendor there in the some intro. Th- you know, so, yeah. so, so, so it was dope. And yeah. it, it came it, it came together. Yeah. And uh, luckily, TV was already playing my other song, Amahaina. Yes, yes. Amahaina was playing, yeah. you know, with Murumba Peach was playing. I did a lot of songs, in fact, with Murumba Peach. Yes. So when this song came to TV, they were just playing them together. Together, TV. yeah. So I was like, this is dope. And I had yeah. just finished doing my acting skit on another thing on Netflix. Yeah. So so it just worked. I, you, you just sound like there's just a lot of bag coming in. And I know I've been... I, <laughs> I know. I, <laughs> I pray. I, I, I know you believe that value money is, is something that just comes after, and those beliefs, obviously, the, the, those are powerful things. I also believe in that. However, I also want to uh, talk about. Let's talk about money now. You know, we've been talking about everything, but you see uh, how my light, in my <laughs> face just lights up. <laughs> we talk about money. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, people need to know that um, whether you are creating content or you're making music. And you are passionate about it. They're gonna get to a point where you have Maybe, money, yeah. but the, the, that's not the problem. The problem is to sustain it. Uh, I've learned. I like this book. I've, I was reading it the other day. This one. Yeah, manage your money like an effing grown up. Yes, I mean, I started. I started this book long time ago. Before the time so I, I st- I've had it for a while. I just go over certain books, you know. Then this one, I make sure that I record everything because. Um, by the time I, st- I was starting to get money with these gigs, uh, which obviously you know how they, to work with part, uh, brands and stuff like that. Sometimes it's not a long term. So I had to 
have that uh, financial literate because obviously we are not born with this thing and they don't mm. teach us mm. so i had to learn this book and you and un- understand that you're not just someone who's making money on socials you know we, maybe when you get the money there are things that you do outside yes. like you open your own you believe in also in investing maybe if yes. you can touch that yes. what are the importance of are uh, just maybe for content creators there yeah. this show is for influencers that are making bag now they are popping everything is fine you know every week or every month brands want to work with them because they are trending and yeah. they're getting all this back yeah, yeah. based on your experience obviously it got to based on your experience how did you learn about money what did you learn about money from up until now so um it's a dope question so for me um i grew up with um, with the with the understanding of money oh okay it was right. easy yeah um my mom mm. always my mom is the person who taught me how to save money yeah right so going to school yeah i'd get pocket change pocket money yeah right i wouldn't eat my money mm. always be like ah doana okay mm. today oh okay, yeah. let's eat save my money mm. be like ishtona no chirlo sweetheart you know yeah saving my money all the time i'd snack with the with 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 the boys yeah. we come together put mm. money together save this money for lunch yeah a funny story mm. when i was in high school yeah i was so naughty <laughs> i used to steal a quarter that they used to sell the kiosk until they hired me mm. so they're like hey when i'm fun Tanala, Tanala, Tanala. They hired me with my boy, and we sold a makota there. Yeah. So when we were selling quarters, mm. so it means the money I'm getting from home, yeah. I'm very not make, I'm not spending it. Yeah. I'm eating quarters for free because yes. now I'm an employee. There. Yes, yes. But out of that, when I started DJing and everything, yeah. I realized that you need to put away 10%. percent. You know the tithing that you do at mm. church? Yes. Tithe for yourself. Yeah. Put that ten percent. If you get a thousand rand, put hundred rand. Get hundred and two hundred. Get ten thousand, put a thousand. You get hundred thousand, put hundred. Yeah. You get a million like that. You know, yeah. put hundred thousand aside. So I started to do that with every money from every gig. Yeah, and that's what I'm doing. So that's, so that's why I wanted to cut you off. Did you read the book called uh, The Richest Man in, in Babylon? Babylon? Yes, yeah. I did. When I was, I think I was twenty. Twenty. Yeah, because because that's first rule. Yeah. First so rule. you 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 you. Yeah. You pay yourself first, yes. which is putting money away, yeah. and invest. Yes, invest in. You know, when people talk about investments, always people just think, "Oh, milling fagi maliku mama crypto or mm-hmm. Sometimes it's a simple thing like buying mics. What yes. you just because it, it, it. The more you do this, the more it's gonna pay you. Yes, because investments don't work as in you put money today and whatever. Yes. So whatever you're investing in, first thing is your image. Second thing is what you do. Yes, so. Saving money, I've learned from an early age. Yes. Now, growing up, my mom used to say, "Save your money, save your money, save your money." Yeah. So I started to make m- all my own money when I was 16. Mm. That was, I think, that was actually the last time I asked money for my parents. Yeah. I've been making my own money. Yeah. So when this, the bags from the the the, the brands come through, mm. they're like, "Yo, we've got this hundred for you. Yeah. You know, we've got this, you know, two clipper for yeah, you." Yeah. And you're like, "Oh, two clipper. Mm. Hey, what am I gonna do with two clipper? I'm gonna go buy this, go mm. buy this, mm. ball out, do all yeah. of these things, sharp." Yeah. But how much are you saving on the side? Yes. We understand. So I've I've created a structure whereby, if it's more than what I need, mm. I save fifty percent of it. Yes. So if for the month I need thirty five thousand to pay my bills, yeah. If I make a hundred thousand this month, yeah. it means fifty thousand. I'm saving it. Yeah, and you left with thirty-five thousand. I pay, put it aside. Yeah. Then we are left with fifteen thousand yes. to now live the best yes. life. Now we're going to kickbox this fifteen thousand. You understand? Yeah. So if it becomes more than what you need, mm. save more than twenty percent. That's yeah. just a rule. It's yes. a golden rule that yes. I've made, and yeah. have multiple um, investment accounts. Yes. It can be a 32 day investment but there's that 350 450 yeah. 550 that the bank gives you in a daily. Yeah. That money piles up. Eh bro, cuz I mean, I didn't start honestly, I, I know what you're saying, I relate to it and I understand, but trust me, there are influencers right now, content creators popping, making money on YouTube, back to back eating it. And seasons are not the same, but I mean, learning from people like you obviously who's now, you don't want to create content for, forever, man. 
Like you can look, you can create content forever. Yeah. You also don't want to create content forever. Yeah. But is it sustainable forever? Do you understand that, what I mean? Because exactly. with that money that you are saving, you're mm. able to do other things with it. Yes. Do you understand what yeah. I mean? I've been fortunate that from and this is not just me. I'm not bragging or anything. Yeah, no, it's okay. From the moment I did my skits to this point. Yeah. Um all the cars I've ever had. Yeah. I've never paid the insurance with my money. Ish. It's been passive yeah, yeah. income. It's saving. That came from relationships. Relationships, Ish. partnerships that I had made long time mm. ago that were like those things were I knew that okay, this thing mm. makes me let's say 3000 a month. Yeah. That 3000, be smart enough to find something a need in your life that requires 3000. To yeah. be taken care. So if you have a phone, your phone, you pay 700 a month, get something that, that gives you 700 a month that doesn't take away from your money. Mm. Yes, that's the best advice, bro. So I've been having this, that insu- insurance for anything I have in my life mm. has been paid for. By that specific thing, mm. the decision I took in 2015 is still paying even now. Yeah. My insurance every month, I'm like, oh, you see, God is great. Hey, bro. I mean, I'm going to use that. I mean, I didn't I mean, obviously there's different streams of income, but I never looked at it like look that. At, look at, look at, yeah. look at it in this sense. Yeah. Let's say you make 20,000. Yeah. From this, let's say it's a brand. You yeah. make 20,000 from this brand right yeah. now. Yeah. But you already have your money. You already paid your rent and everything. Yeah. You say, okay, my cell phone is 670. Mm. I've got 12 months to go. Yeah. If this 12 months it's 6000 rand. If you make a debit order from that 20000 that you've made, debit order of 600 rand a month, it means for the entire year this year, mm. you have paid for your phone. Yeah. Ish. With that debit order. So mm. whatever money that comes in, it doesn't deduct from what? Mm. From your your your, mm. your my main income. Your main income. Yeah. So if you have a side savings account that or say side capitec mm. there or whatever mm. bank whatever smaller nyana. Mm. That takes that six hundred rand. It's fine because you've already took that twenty thousand, yeah. and you minus the money for the phone, yeah. which is maybe seven thousand for the year. Mm. The thirteen thousand you take from that thirteen thousand one point three, you save it. Yeah. You're left with whatever money. Then yeah. you spend that money, but you know every month my phone is paid. I don't yes. touch the bill your phone. Yes. Don't see it because it's. Yeah, that's how you live your life yeah, comfortably. No. Guys, uh, I'm 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 actually gonna listen to this again and again. Right? <laughs> write it down because i'm also <laughs> learning you know it's not just about people i'm also learning sitting down with great minds i get to learn and and that's why i chose to have a podcast you know it's for me yeah it's, firstly it's for me yeah but also the people like 100 i think it's it's it's, it's dope to to because you it means you have the right understanding of why you have a podcast yeah because no, to have a podcast is to imp- to get gather knowledge and information exactly from but people from people you know. but if you're not doing that you just oh so she's thick <laughs> okay. Yeah, okay, no. okay 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 so you shot this person yeah. how many times you see <laughs> so we can we can talk about a lot of things we there can. are many podcasts talking about a lot but you just need to you organize your, yourself find your yeah stuff, yeah you worked with MTN and uh, according to me and I don't know, even other people, but you know, it's the biggest, uh, for me personally, I think it was the biggest deal ever. Uh, you can correct me uh, if I'm wrong. Yeah, it was a bag. Because it was a bag <laughs> to this day. Even today. So <laughs> you see, it, was, it wasn't just, yeah. it's the biggest. So yeah. uh, through this whole partnership, what did you learn? Like the whole from the beginning when they called you up until now, and the knowledge that you have, obviously in terms of working with bigger brands, yeah. b- brands that has reputation, yeah, and also looking at what you are doing also and the way you should live and you know maybe just the way you live and keep your reputation because if you're still back now, it means that you've been living in a certain way not to try to. Uh, maybe destroy what yeah, you already yeah. established. I, yeah, I, I I I feel like um, honestly speaking, I've been fortunate. Yeah, you know, I am I'm an, I'm I'm human. I f- I mess up then. Y- then. Yes, um, but I've been fortunate, mm. and with with the fortune for fortunate, I also said fortune. <laughs> <laughs> but being fortunate, it comes with. Um, 
understanding that you need to take care of what you have. Yeah. So shout out to the people at Content CCA for yeah. putting together that deal. It's yeah. amazing. Yeah. So <laughs> it's, it's it's bread. It's big bread. It's bread. You know. Yeah. Um. It's 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 one thing to to get that, and it's like what we were talking about just now about money. Yeah. But creating that those partnerships because beyond that mm. bag, there's a life. Yes. Yes. Um, exactly. And you don't need to blow your bag exactly. or blow your yeah. relationships, partnerships with those people. Yes. So I've been fortunate in being able to sustain those relationships um, and just working towards being better for those brands, yes. recognizing what this brand is, where this brand is at yeah. and where this brand requires. Because um, some of the new territories of um of of like color tunes the space for color tunes yeah i was sort of i would want to say guinea pig but i was one of the people that tapped into that market of that country yes it's to say, so unique to say yeah katu get yeah. katu's content here yeah get katu's things here mm. katu's work so which was dope yeah uh but with that also it needs you to ground you talk about how content creators are making money and all of this thing. yeah don't grow too big in here right remain Humble. Humble. Yeah. It's hard for people to remain humble when they just see a million rand in their bank account. It's very it's hard. A, oh, it's actually, a, it's actually you know, a test from it's God. A, it's a test. God will give you that. You too. know, you make that when you're very young. Yeah. You blow it. You still learn. Yeah. I've blowed money. I'm yeah. not going to lie. I've, <laughs> yo, I've, yo, yo. It's part of it, man. But you learn. Yeah. Uh, and luckily with reading and understanding knowledge and how life works, mm. you pick up. You pick up. You you you've been mentioning reading from the beginning, and for every interview that they conduct with you, you mentioned reading. How did reading impacted your life or in, or your career? So for me, reading was a big thing. My late grandfather used to have a cane. Everything like yeah. nobody me no Muslim. Like ah yo okay, I read. I didn't like, take this newspaper. Read it. Yeah. You know, he, I don't remember if he could read or he couldn't read. I don't remember. Yeah. I just know he was a well-off yeah. man. He was nice. Yeah. But I needed to read. He taught me to read. To an, so he said to me, in anything that you do, yeah. every time you pray, ask for two things, wisdom and knowledge. Those two things, you will have everything in life. That's what King uh, King Solomon prayed for. Do you understand? For, yeah. So that's what he used to say to me. So reading has been a very important thing for me too gauge where mm. i had made mistakes where mm. i am in life right now where i want to go so re guys just read and and what are the most powerful books that you have read that you think Yo. changed your life and maybe if you can share them uh, with the viewers can also maybe change their lives in whatever area of life they are um yes it's, it's very hard to tie maybe I'll, I'll say about four or five yeah there's a book by florence kovoshin called the game of life and how to play it there's a book by Napoleon Hill called The Laws of Success. There's also another book by um, Ah Yaiki Yaiki Razorzan. It's mm. called The Secret of Dreams or something. It talks about dreaming. Yeah, <sighs> dreaming like when you're sleeping. Yeah, when you're sleeping, like what happens in the dreams. It's a Yaiki Razorzan. Yes. I forgot what the what, but it's about dreams. Yeah. Uh, there's also another one by Florence Kovalshin that is about intuition. Yes. Also really dope. Uh, that's the books that you are reading are spiritual, if yes. I just have to. But there's also business books, you know, that mm. I've, I've read. My phone is there. I've got these books in the back of my mind. Yeah. But there's a lot. A also lot. You can, you can read this. Man managing Your Money Like an F and Grown Up is a dope book. Yes. Um, you can read Think and Grow Rich. Yes. It's a simple thing. Read. Um, um, it's not. Andrew Carnegie, is it? Is it Andrew Carnegie's um, How to Make Friends and No, to it, to it's everyone? actually it's actually Gay Gay. It's his brother. It's his brother. It's not Andrew. It's not Andrew. It's Gay. Yeah, yeah, Carnegie. So yeah. The, the, you can read the Carnegie stuff. It's uh, that's the current book I'm reading now. Yeah, I read those things like years ago. Yo, the bruh. books that I'm reading now are very hectic because yeah. right now I'm reading Owen Swartz Martins. Yeah. Um, I'm listening to lectures by Manly P. Hall, where he talks about the 
your subconscious mind. Yes. Like the in-depth of how your subconscious mind bro, works. I've been teaching this thing to people, to my followers, but I um, don't think they're getting it, bro. If you get it, you will you'll be nah. And um, <laughs> <laughs> I, trust me, you'll be nah. Ish. There's a book I want to tell you about. Um, I, I want to mention this book, but mm. um, it's, it's... It talks about what? It's slipping from, from my mind. It just talks about finances and mm. understanding money and understanding wealth. You know? Also, I just read a book. Psychology of Money. I've read the Psychology of Money. Mm. Uh, it's also a dope book. It's yeah. also a very crude. I mean, Psychology of Money is one of those books that you need to have in your house, like the Forty Eight Laws of Power. Exactly, it's like yeah. simple books. Like yeah. Forty Eight Laws of Power is a simple book. If you go read about uh, 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 um, Napoleon Bonaparte, that's it. You you mention laws, and obviously this podcast is not about books, but I'm a book fanatic also. You mm. mentioned laws of success by Napoleon Hill. Yes. That thick book yes. like the that. The purple one. The thing. Yeah, it's very big. Yo. You're well, very big. So, very, I mean, very, guys, if you're listening, that book has everything. It's career. There's a chapter that I feel like they didn't talk about, which mm. is the power, which is where they talk about sexual transmutation. Remember when I was telling you about how I met this guy? Yeah, yeah. About the two girls. Mm -hmm, and yes, yes. I didn't understand. I didn't practice those things. But now I practice sexual transmutation. Yeah, no, it's, Which is it's, dope. It's, it's, yeah. For me, it's mastermind. Ah, man. The mastermind chapter just... I mean, that's yes. why I'm here You need, yeah, you need your mastermind group. You need, yes. you need those people that, that yeah. are in your mastermind. I learned a lot group. from that book. Because everything I was doing by myself and all those kind of things... Um, Oh, I'm reading a book also now called, I don't know, but it's about <laughs> property and how to keep wealth in the family. Yes, yeah. in, in, in inheritance and stuff like that. that. Type of stuff. Ish, man, I have I'm, these names of these books on my phone, man. You, you know, when you're a book fanatic, you read so much books that There's a lot. You, you just <laughs> know how, now you are living them, but you actually don't recall even yes. the people and you just live in them now. So, 100%. So how did it impact your success or your career? Like what, what was the effect that reading has had on your... So, so reading for me, honestly speaking, it mm. helped me understand myself, number one. Yeah. Understand God. Yeah. Understand women and yeah. money. Wh wh why, are, why are women included? Women are very important when you're a man <laughs> to understand them. Yes. If you read anything... They will mm. tell you a man's downfall is a what? Yeah, of course. So you need to understand Them. why it's like that. Yeah. Do you understand? And also understand mm. just life. Yeah. So women give life. Yeah. So I love women, man. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> I mean, who doesn't? I mean, but, we all but, love. But, but, but but controlling ourselves. But yeah, controlling and understanding mm. Mm. what it means to be a male. Yeah. And a female and a man and a woman. Yeah. So. Katu, uh, tell me, what, what should people expect from you, like, this year, not, not in the next five years? I know you're always doing something. I, I, I'm not one person to talk about my plans because I read somewhere when you t talk about your plans, you dissipate them. Is it? Yeah. But so don't you, you think... You trick your mind to believing that you've already done this or you are doing it and you end up not doing it. Mm, that's that's, that's some um, different angle of looking at things. So you don't say it all. I like to touch then because obviously let's just say i'm doing great things yeah people, <laughs> people you know people are asking are we still gonna see like a lot of uh abuti yes time? no definitely yeah definitely i feel like one thing i did um um which was dope this is uh pre-covid yeah i did a whole lot of uh, collaborations. I did a whole lot of videos with Boyo, Robot Boys, yeah, 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 this yeah, person, this yeah, person, yeah. these influencers. Yeah. We did a lot of collaborations. I feel like I'm probably going to get back to doing a lot of col collabor it? funny collaborations yes. with people. I mean, so people want to laugh. People just, yeah. you know. So videos, definitely. Videos are still going to, more music is still going to come out. Yeah. Um, more for the record label. Yeah. Um, and just more of partnerships and yeah. more campaigns of that stuff i just don't like getting into details like yes, what i just said yes, dissipates no, those fair, things fair fair yeah uh we have this thing we uh when we close up we as no chill uh, vodcast we ask general questions you know you know everything about djing but now it's it's the time <laughs> where we're gonna test your understanding of <laughs> if things <I'm> dumb. yeah <laughs> um I just have a few questions, so oh, just to test your knowledge. You guys have more of this water, no? 
Yeah. yeah. What 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 is uh, this? Is the first question. If it's a math question, I it's only not, know man. It's oh. general. <laughs> okay. It's general. What is the smallest planet in solar uh, system? Pluto. Did I get it? No. Wait, wait. <laughs> There's Mars. Mars is not small. The smallest planet in our solar system. Smallest. So. It isn't Pluto. No. Pluto is the smallest. It isn't that is nine. Is, is not Pluto the biggest? This is Mercury. This oh yes. Yeah. No man. For real. I mean Isn't okay. Pluto small? Let's, let's see. Let's see. Is Pluto the bigger than Jupiter? Jupiter is huge. Isn't Jupiter, it? yeah. Jupiter is the the biggest. Yeah, it's Mercury. It's Mercury, ne? Mm. Ah, okay, it's fine. Oh no, Pluto is the furthest. Yeah, maybe. Yes. What is the tallest mammal in the world? The tallest mammal in the world is a giraffe. Oh, we one. Correct. Since you're a reader, who wrote the Harry Potter series? J.K. Rowling. <laughs> what is the largest organ in the human body? The brain. I'm kidding. No, the lungs. It's, <laughs> wait, in the human body? Yes. Wait, there's brains. There's, there's not the brains, it's not the lungs. This man, is it the, the liver? No. You remember in the, uh, it's not in, actually inside. So you, what are the organs? You know the organs, mate. <laughs> no, it's something that I mean I don't think if you don't know you would you would guess it. What a tongue? No. What is it? It's the skin. Oh yes. <laughs> I feel dumb now. <laughs> so who painted the famous artwork, the Mona Lisa? Oh man, I don't. I really don't. I just know where it is. I know it's at the Louvre in Paris. I just don't know who painted it. Leonardo da Vinci. Yes, I almost said DiCaprio. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there, there's someone. Because I like Van Gogh. There was someone who actually said that. Yeah. How many bones are in the human body? Come on, man! You're killing me. Yeah, this, these are general questions. Bro. If it's like two hundred and something, it's no, it's not. It's two hundred. Yeah, two hundred and something. Yes. Just give it to me. I'm, I got it right. Two hundred and six. Yes, I got. I must say two hundred forty-four. So I saved. I saved right. this for last because you said you don't like. In fact, two question. What is the capital city of Spain? Capital city of Spain, isn't it Ibiza? Come on, capital city of Spain. Think of Spain. Do you watch soccer? Which one? Or Madrid. Okay, it's Madrid. Sure. <laughs> and uh, the last Not one. Not a football fan. What is the Madrid. chemical symbol for gold in chemistry? For gold? Yeah. Isn't it geo something? <laughs> <laughs> geo it's, two it's, something? It's, it's, it's AU. AU! Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I feel dumb right no, now. No, Katuman, thanks for coming to No Chill Podcast. I mean, I appreciate I that you didn't ask me who I'm dating, all these things. Nah, nah, this nah, is great. Nah, nah, nah. We remember, it's, oh, not, it's not really great. about you. I told you it's about what you know. Yeah, so no, that's great. I mean, if people want to know who you're dating, I know you're single, so I just. Oh, you see, this is a man who knows me. You just posted not long ago. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's tough. Okay, last question just to close. We're fine. Just to close, uh, you said um, being a DJ sometimes can be hard uh, yeah. because of the stigma that is um, attached to being a DJ. You mm -hmm. know, hey, mm -hmm. you have a lot of women. Just for close up, can you maybe just share that? Maybe correct if you have a way to correct the people. It's, it's, it's no, it's not hard. I mean, it's also it's nice, but um, there are people who don't have groupies. It's mm. tough for them. Yeah, you know we have. Yeah. God is great. <laughs> <laughs> no, being a DJ is nice. It's mm. uh, it's nice, and um, you get all this uh, this this attention from different people. Please don't sleep around. It takes away your luck. Yeah. Um. So yeah, that's just the closing. Is it? What What are you gonna say to your people? The last thing. And then if man, keep supporting No Chill God, keep supporting DJ Cartoon. You turn up to Yazi, you know. Yeah. You turn up from La Yazi, you know. Yes. Maroso Yaz. Maroso Yaz, really. Oh, so Yaz, look to Yaz, really. Love you long time. Thank you so much, guys. Oh, Shout really. out. We are out on No Chill really. Vodcast. Thank you, Katu, for coming, my brother. I appreciate, appreciate you, man. Appreciate. Next week, Bafetu, same time, we are here at 9 o'clock, No Chill Vodcast. <laughs>